name is Jenna Halfacre and today we're in Homer, Alaska. But we're not going to be hiking this time. We drove down from Anchorage to Homer to interview Aaron and Hig of Ground Truth Trekking. In 2007 through 2008, Aaron and Hig hiked, skied, and rafted from Seattle to the Aleutian Chain. So today we're going to talk to them about life in Alaska and hiking with kids. Well hi guys. And, um, um, it's nice to be here with Aaron and Hig. Uh, Kat, Mai, and Latoya. How are you guys doing today? Oh, good, good. good? It's, uh, it, it seems like spring. Uh, I know. Yes, awesome. yes. And, and, but it's not. <laughs> we, we know that spring will not actually come for another few months yet. Yeah, we're not fooled. How did you guys decide to come to Alaska? And tell us a little bit about that trip up here. Well, I actually grew up here. I, I, uh, I was, I don't know, eight months old or something when my family moved up here. And and, uh, and once uh, Aaron and I started dating, we were up here pretty much every summer, huh? Yeah, so we'd been kind of, we were in school. So I was, we were in college in Minnesota, then we were in graduate school in Seattle, and every time we could get away, we'd kind of sneak up to Alaska and, and, and do some adventure and make some excuses to our graduate school advisors. And then, so we kind of always thought we would probably end up here and then um in 2007 he got his phd and we left seattle meaning that we handed the key to our landlord and started walking to alaska yeah, yeah. <laughs> went, went right out the front door and headed north <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to do it i guess yes yeah, so we, 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 we kind of overshot too and that we walked all the way to the first aleutian island and so that was a a year-long journey. When we finished that, we ended up just moving to Saloon. Tell us a little bit about Ground Truth Trekking. We've been doing these treks long before we were had any sort of organization, and we just realized, you know, over the years that every time we went, you know, wandering around in the woods and then talking to people as, you know, in these remote places, that we would always learn stuff. And we would learn so much stuff that we just, you know didn't even think of beforehand and you know that that's sort of where the idea came from that by getting out there on the ground and doing these expeditions there's stuff that you can you can see that you can't see any other way so maybe we should actually share that with people yeah and you know and it, it's it's amazing i mean every time we do something like this we like like in recent trips you know we, we've done a lot of research beforehand we think Okay, I kind of understand whatever issues we're we're looking at, and we're always surprised at what we learn when we actually get out there, talk to someone who lives in a place, and and see what the deal is. There's a, there's just it's it's an incredible way to learn. We we think of it as the cheese sauce and the broccoli. The broccoli is all this stuff we learn, and the cheese sauce is the adventure story. No one really needs to hear our adventure stories, but they're fun, and you know we're good at getting ourselves into trouble, and then mostly getting ourselves out of it again. So kind of to facilitate that, what we try to do is we try to pick places to go that seem like they have a lot of stuff going on. So we go to places where there's big natural resource issues, like maybe mining projects, or we go to places recently to a glacier that's retreating really rapidly due to climate change and kind of, you know, put ourselves in a place where we think there probably is something important to learn and then see what it is when we get there. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a bit about your decision to become parents and how will you transition from... Adventuring as a couple to adventuring as a family. <laughs> it was kind of funny, actually, because we, we made the decision to have a kid actually in the middle of that year-long journey. Um, and it's one of those things that you just, you kind of end up with a lot of time to talk about your life when you're having an adventure. I mean, because, you know, we didn't really have anything set in stone. We didn't have any job we had to go to. We didn't have any place we had to go to. You know, so we could really kind of choose anything. And so we ended up talking about all that kind of stuff. And we decided actually in the middle of a particularly harrowing crossing of an ice-choked bay that, yeah, we, we do want to have a kid. I was ended up being one month pregnant or so when we finished that journey. Like, I was pregnant with him basically when we were still on the journey. And, and we didn't actually at that time really know that much about babies. And we didn't actually really know how it would work to adventure with them. And we thought, I don't know, can you take a baby into the woods? Do we have to wait till he's old enough to, like, have Grandma watch him for a while? Yeah. And then once he was born, we're like, oh, this kid is, is pretty portable, and we just never looked back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we kept pushing those limits. And, and, you know, in 2010, did several significant trips, and then then uh, spent a couple of months last year. It's, it's, it's really, it, it has worked out really well. Yeah, I mean, and you can really go way out there. I mean, we've been, you know, we were out, you know, th 
through all the way into November on the Lost Coast, you know, out on Malaspina Glacier with both of them, which is, you know, he's, Hig is, is saying that, oh, anything is more of an adventure with kids, which is true, but also, I mean, we've taken our kids places that very few adults would ever go. So it's not that, you know, you just have to go to the park in your backyard and say that that's an adventure. It can be, but you can do a lot more. Any specific changes in technique now that you're hiking and rafting with little ones? Well, I mean, the biggest, the biggest straightforward thing is we do have to carry more weight. And, and like we were referring to Well, we to have our, to carry them for... For example, <laughs> you know, and, and there are other things as well. So we were calling our, calling, uh, yeah. we were calling this recent trip the heaviest light, ultralight expedition ever because we just had, you know, we really agonized every, over every little bit, but we ended up carrying a lot. And one of the things that we actually, we carried recently, uh, we did a trip on a glacier, uh, last fall. And um, we carried actually a tent with a stove in it, and, um, uh, and having a tent with a stove in it really uh, uh, it made it way more reasonable to have to be along with the kids in this really harsh, like you know, driving rain, uh, snowstorms, this sort of thing. I mean, and you wouldn't need it for any trip with kids, and we've certainly done trips with them with lighter tents too. But you know, if it's you're going to be out for two months of fall, then, you know, that's nice to have a place where they can play where it's warm occasionally. So it was, so we did, you know, we have done change technique a lot. I mean, we do more base camping along the way, you know, figure out how to carry more. We had to figure out how to take diapers, but it's not really any different in character from the same kinds of things we've had to figure out to figure out you know how you could spend a year walking to the illusions i mean we had to figure out okay you know what sort of gear can we carry you know how can we traverse this terrain you know where is it possible to get food and how much can we carry and it's it's kind of it's all the same kind of logistics because really logistics is the biggest Thing you have to figure out. Once you actually get kids out into the wilderness, they like it. They're not any harder to deal with than they are at home. <laughs> Easier in some ways because to get out there, you have to give up everything else. So, um. so what are some things you carry in your pack now that you're with the kids that you wouldn't go without? Uh, <laughs> diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping well. to go without that reasonably soon. But no, I, I mean. I, I'm trying to think. You know, one of the things that we that we have really changed in that way, I think, is is our our bear uh, bear stuff, and we carry like a bear fence now, and and um, and you know, our bears are always there's some risk associated with it, but it's much more charismatic risk. It sounds a lot scarier than it really is. However, with kids, I really believe that 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 ups the ante. Not just because they're more vulnerable, but they're also, I believe, an attractant for for bears. And so we've really increased our our and not our for most there. bears, but just like the chances that a bear that would run away from adults might be intrigued by a squeaky little toddler are higher. We'll go to a more fun one. What's Katmai's favorite camping food? Oh, let's see. What did he like the best? Dried well, fruit, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like fruit. he was talking for like a month before we left about we, you know, we'd be, we'd be like, okay, you know, we tell him, you know, that the trip yeah. that was coming up. Someone had asked, well, you know, where are you going? He say, he say, oh, I'm going to Malaspina Glacier, and, and he said, well, what are you going to do there? And he says, I'm going to eat dried strawberries on the glacier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he, he was he was, he was there when we bought a bunch of our the food we were preparing for that and packaging it up, and was really excited about all this dried fruit that that he was going to get to eat. All right, guys, share some advice with us about keeping toddlers entertained on the trail. Well, so when you're actually, you know, let them go down and play, no advice is needed. There's always something to play with. Like, actually, you know, the times we've had to work on that are, you know, when when Katmai's riding on my back or when he's in the pack raft. And I think the best thing in the pack raft was a big bag of rocks and sticks to throw <laughs> over the side. So you start out with ballast and then slowly lose it as yeah, the kid yeah. chucks them all over the side. That was good. <laughs> and otherwise, and this works for most places, at the I see game when they're old enough to talk, like, oh, what do you see? I see birds. I see ocean. I see blue trash on the beach. I see, you know, we did carry we, we did carry a couple little toys, too. It's nice to have, like, little tiny plastic animals, way very yeah. little, and they, they add a, a subject for this huge landscape to play in. Yeah, and, they're, they're good, especially know. for, like, camp. And, you know, and though you, you know, he sometimes did hold them when he was on my back. But, yeah, that that's most of it, I think, yeah. And, 
little songs. Like I think there was there was a face. There was an old McDonald face. I remember. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> got, got older. That got old for us, but not for him. <laughs> a good day, you might get three or four hours of solid traveling in. You know, and then you know, then all the other. Well, stuff then maybe there. an extra hour during the nap time. <laughs> okay, guys. Last question. What are the biggest challenges, and what are the greatest rewards of parenting in Alaska? Well, um, I, I, you know, in Alaska in general, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, I think that we, we talk about kind of wilderness parenting sometimes, and and, uh, 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 and I think that one of the things that's, um, you know, that's really a, a, an amazing uh, opportunity Done with there, that. if you're if you're doing that sort of thing, if you're out in the woods a lot, is that kids are pretty well, I think, naturally evolved to be able to entertain themselves with what is around them in the woods, you know, and. And uh, and and it's it's fairly often they discover things that, that we weren't expecting or anything. And even just the simple being forced to slow down means that even if it's not something that Cat my points out to us, we see a lot more than we would otherwise out in the wilderness just by being forced to go at a slower pace. And as far as challenges, I would say, you know, the biggest challenge is you know. For wilderness travel is, you know, just figuring out how to carry everything. For Alaska, more generally, I wish they could put on their own snowsuits. Just like we get out of those <laughs> all the time, but the the logistics of getting the two little kids into all their snow gear <laughs> to go outside and play can get old. <laughs> well, guys, it's been great seeing you. If there's anything else you want to add, now's the point. But, I mean, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. and. Hoping for a great video here, and you know, really appreciate the information on uh, babies in Alaska. So thanks, guys. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank Jenna. you very much. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> All right. What what is this? What are you going? What are you doing, Katmai? <laughs> Showing us your snow cave. I can't get in there. <laughs> you got him, please.